Hey guys, I'm Jeff from Smart Deploy, and you might have missed it, but we recently had a webcast where we went over some of the pain points and, and methods for managing these major Windows 10 updates, and we had some questions afterwards that didn't quite get answered. So to help me with those, I have Alan Marsh, our CTO. Thank you for agreeing to uh, come on my little show here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And if you would like to watch that webcast, uh, do check the link below, we'll have that for you. But for now, let's get into the questions. All right, number one. My master virtual machine and images tend to get bigger with time. What is the best way to compress either the virtual machine or the images? We use both Hyper-V and Oracle VirtualBox virtualization software in our environment. Yeah, so virtual machines, will, if, if it's a dynamically expanding disk, they'll, they'll definitely grow. It, they're kind of grow in relation to the amount of change that's happened in the virtual disk. Sure. So you kind of have to go and look, and if it's, if the, if the virtual disk is using 60 gigs and there's only 30 gigs in, in the actual VM or whatever, then there is usually a compact um, in the virtualization software sure. that will usually bring that back down. Um, okay. But you might have to run disk cleanup in the VM to get rid of the Always a good updates idea. or whatever. So right. All right. you can whittle it back down. Or you can just so I, I guess, yeah, compare. St start fresh. Start fresh. I, w I highly recommend starting <coughs> fresh. All right. <laughs> From a best practice standpoint, how often would you recommend re-imaging a computer, your computer? Often. Often. <laughs> no, uh, I do my no, own. I, I, I think this new, the Windows feature update twice a year cadence, that's kind of got me on like when I do it. So mm -hmm. like I'm still on 18.03 now, but um, you know, 18.09 is out. It's been out for a little bit. It's been updated. Like, so now I'm like, oh, I need to get on the latest. Sure. So that's kind of the, um, right. you know, and if you have your... If your data's in the cloud, like if you're using OneDrive to sync all your stuff, then it's pretty easy to reload now. Yeah, I mean, I only have a couple apps that aren't included in the image that I like. And yeah, so, all your stuff. I mean, it's not even an afternoon and I can be like, zip. And it's pretty cool because all that stuff, now that they have the, where it'll just show a placeholder of the file and it doesn't have to even re-download it. It's right. kind of instantaneous. And, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. Nicholas wants to know, what is the general opinion on trusting in Microsoft's update process, especially in light of the October update? And is the recommended action to delay Windows updates until we know they're secure, working, and lacking major bugs? Yeah, I think, I mean, <clears throat> 1809 certainly had its problems. I think Microsoft got a kind of a bad rap in the press for some of that. Like, some of them weren't. Mm -hmm. It kind of got overblown. Sure. Um, people like to be like oh they you know have problems or whatever and I, it, it, it there was bugs in other releases too so 1803 had some bugs and whatever and I, I think the thing is is that they're iterating really fast now and you know you can say what you want about their testing or practices or whatever but they're iterating really fast but they're also fixing stuff really fast so 1809 has been out now for just a couple months there's already been a couple of cumulative updates for it that fixes all the stuff that was broken so yeah I think that's the thing is just and it's always been, I don't think 1809 really changed it for me. I think it's been the same of like, give it a couple months, let a couple cumulative updates come out, then it's probably good. Let <laughs> someone else stumble on the bugs. <laughs> I think it's, I, I wouldn't wait forever, but sure. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, a month or two of like, get those cu first couple cumulatives yeah. and it'd be better, yeah. I, I certainly don't jump to the new updates. So yeah, maybe wait a little bit. Uh, this one's a question of my own. Pilsner or IPA? IPA. IPA. Pabst or Rainier? Pabst. Ha! I think they're the same beer. I think it's like a tube, and then, then they just split it. That's fair. It it can't. Still, very delicious. All right. Anyways, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, in in the, the webcast, we did talk about using, you know, your OneDrive or, or Google Drive account uh, when you're utilizing the internet to do your imaging and stuff, right? Mm. So... Sam wants to know, are there any security considerations we need to know about when deploying over the internet? I don't really think so. I mean, I, I, you know, for, for me, it's not that big a deal putting your image in the cloud. I think when we first came up with that idea, it was like, ooh, image in the cloud, that's sensitive. It's really not that sensitive of data. I think user data, corporate data is a lot scarier to put in the cloud than sure. your image. I mean, your image, you know, you can have a password on it and it's not really that useful until it joins your domain. I mean, if you have, you, worst case, if somebody got a hold of it, you might have some piece of software, licensed software in there. So mm -hmm. I don't know if, if there was something really sensitive like that, then maybe you could 
leave it out and install it post image, but I don't. Yeah, that's I, I that's a good idea. I don't think having it up there is that. Yeah. That scary. Sure, I don't think so either. Well, Nikita wants to know: Will cloud deployment work for a user who is off the network in their home, for example? Yes. 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 It works quite well. I've actually I've <laughs> I've done plenty of testing. <clears throat> it's great. So yes. That was the whole idea behind the cloud deployment: <laughs> is that the, both the console and the client only have to talk up to the cloud, so sure. they can be completely separate from each other. Awesome. How does Smart Deploy stack up against Case? K2000. Yeah, I've, I've never personally used Case, so I can't say like this is this is great and that's great or not. But um, you know, they're they're a bigger a bigger thing. We've we've heard from customers that it's expensive. We've you know they're they're a big management thing. I mean, they have two appliances. One does management. One does deployment. Um, and I'm sure some people love it and think it's great and have it working great and everything. You know, we we there's just kind of a big deal. We tried to make ours you know Smart Deploy very. Um, easy to just get started with a fully functional trial and you can install it on a laptop and mm -hmm. get going in a day. That's kind of more our, you know, trying to make it easy with wizards and simple to install. And right. I don't know. I don't think so, IT admins like being able to complete tasks in one day. That doesn't sound like <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right. Well, interesting. Okay. Moving on, Matthew wants to know, does Smart Deploy only work with images or can you do something like a scripted install? Yeah, I think we're only images. And sure. I think I think case, uh, at least they used to be um, scripted okay. um, install. So we, we kind of went the way of, we like we preferred images because you, you know for sure what you're going to get with an image every time it's repeatable. Mm -hmm. Scripted. Yes, but you can. There's so many spots where you can tweak it that something could change. Um, and there's the time piece too. So scripted is going to take longer than an image, right? If you script an install of Office, it takes a while for all those all the setup things to happen. Whereas if it's just applying bits to a drive, it's going to be faster. So right. All right. We're image based. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Two more. Okay. Nelson wants to know how does Smart Deploy handle encrypted drives? Yeah, so it's really about the data that's on the drive. If you want to save that data during a re-image, uh, then some things you have to do. If you don't care about the data on the drive, just blow it away and move along and Bye. everything's fine. Yeah, okay. If you, want, if you want to migrate the user's data, then um, it's not in there yet, but we're adding a feature to the console where you can decrypt the drive before the image process starts so that the once it reboots, into the deployment environment, it can then migrate the data either in place or off the machine or whatever. Sure. But yeah, it requires a, a decryption if you're going to get to the data. Right, and that includes if you want to reuse the computer name, right? Yeah, you got to. Yeah, the way we read the computer name is from the offline registry hive. So if we yeah. can't if we can't read the drive, we can't. Got it. Yeah, we can't get right. to any of that stuff. So. Okay, so decrypt, but pretty soon we'll do it for you. Awesome. Yes. All right. Last one. Okay. Max asked, how many machines can you deploy at the same time with Smart Deploy? It really depends on your preference, I guess. Sure. Um, you know, if, if we're talking about network, then Microsoft says unicast deployment should be, 25 is the tipping point in the, for needing to do multicast. And the reason for that is when you do multicast, it first copies the image down. So there's this little bit of extra time. Hmm. Okay. So some people want to do multicast just to isolate the network traffic anyway, regardless of how many they're doing. We tend to we stick with Microsoft's guidance and say if you're doing more than 25 at once, then you probably want to be on multicast. Otherwise, it's going to really slow it down. You just have to think about it. It's, it's the same as like taking a giant zip file. I mean, some of the, you know, mm -hmm. must, even OS only is like five gigs. So it's like taking a five gig network or five gig zip file from your network and just like drag extract to your machine. That's roughly the same thing. Sure. If, if okay. your network can handle doing that on like 50 machines at once, great. <laughs> if not, then it might, yeah. might make all the other people cranky who are right. trying to do work. Right. All right. So. Sure. So maybe just keep it at 25. Period. <laughs> well, if you're going to do a whole big, if you, you know, if, if you're going to do a hundred in a shot, you're going to want to do a multicast. Okay. Cool. All right, well, that's all I have for this session. Thank you awesome. for coming on Thanks. and answering these, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you have more questions, please leave them in the comments, or you can always email us or 
yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy this and I hope it was informative. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.